Hello everybody, this is Josh Placer from GameWisdom.com. Welcome to a video examination of Infinite Space 3, Sea of Stars. This is the third game in the Infinite Space series, and I wanted to do an examination of it because it's a really good example of, I guess, like the pros and cons of roguelike design. Infinite Space 3 was kickstarted, then went through early access, and then released, I believe, earlier in 2016. The game built itself as a tabletop roguelike, something designed for quick bursts, which inherently is what makes the roguelike genre, roguelike genre so replayable to begin with. And we're going to see that in this video. There's an actual achievement there. So you can name your guy whatever you want. Pick your ship. I like to go with the Corvette just for pure firepower. We'll keep it all normal and normal, and let's get going. So the idea is we are given several years to explore the galaxy. We have to then return, give our payment, and basically keep whatever we have to live off of. In this phase three is the first game in the series that is 3D. And I think that is a little bit uh, to its detriment. It's kind of hard to see where you are in relation to 3D space compared to the 2D top-down. The rules are pretty simple. As long as I don't lose my main ship, we're good. If I die or time runs out, the game is over, and it calculates our score based on everything that we've done. The whole uh, point of the game is basically for high score and spending about 20-30 minutes going on an adventure. You have different things you can equip on your ships, represented by these different like module outlines that determines what you can and cannot have on. We're going to find places to trade with, items to buy, and stuff like that. So the first thing we can see is that they're offering items I could buy. Pretty expensive though. Vacuum speed is how fast you go in normal space. Nebula speed is how fast you go in these clouds, which you generally want to avoid. So you can see this one is slightly better. So I'm going to just drop that in. No weapons. You don't find that weapons are a very big deal in Infinite Space in any of the games, as it's kind of hard to tell how your ship is going to stack up against enemies. I've had cases where I've dominated, and then there are cases where one ship just blows me up within a second. You're going to choose where you want to go, and that determines your travel time, which you can see up there. So without having any information, we're going to have to just Basically, throw a door at the board and see where we go. Ooh. Wow. And this is like the perfect example of roguelike play. This is one of the best weapons in the entire game, and we just found it on the very first planet. I did not mod this game or hack it. This literally just happened. And that's what makes Infinite Space and roguelike so great, is that... They're built around a variety of random events and some procedurally generated design in terms of map generation, but anything and everything can happen and you just never know. I gotta make sure I'm recording this, hold on. Yeah, that is just too perfect. So apparently we just found the best weapon in the game. I think I'm gonna equip that. That, that would make some sense. Uh... So that just, well, changed everything of what we're going to be doing. Now we need to get into a fight. I would also like to get a better engine so we can move quicker. Because the quicker we can move, the faster we can explore the galaxy. One thing that I like about Infinite Space 3 is that it features random super events that could possibly happen. These are basically game changers that will impact that current run. And since a single run is going to be 20 to 30 minutes, it you know keeps you on your toes. So what's going on here? Okay, I will take that. 
But is it better than what I have? Two, two, three. Mm. Uh, ours may be slightly better. I can still hold on this to trade with, so we'll do that. Let's get out of our little sector. As you can see, time is slowly ticking down. This is a computer that I believe enhances our ship. I'll take that. And we will run into a fight, don't worry. There we go. I think this is a traitor, though. Nope, it's a derelict vessel. Combat is handled automatically. When an enemy gets within your attack range, which mine is now super huge, thanks to the powerful vortex cannon, I will attack it. So for this... I just want to get to the ship and investigate it to complete the event. We can escape, which is very important. There's our little planet rotating. Oh wait, it's a trap! Fortunately, I do have one thing he doesn't have. And that is the vortex. He is getting close. If I had better thrusters, this would be the time to use them. I could basically just like dance around them if I need be. I can see. Oh, oh, oh. No! Oh, we almost had to. And that's again one of the problems I had with Infinite Space 3. It's just very hard to tell how these ships measure up because you can't actually see what they have. But, again, with a randomly generated universe, you never know what you're going to find. That I actually really want. That's not bad either. Again, universe has been randomly generated. So I will swap that out. So with that drive, our travel time will be cut down dramatically. As you can see. So we have a friend, so we'll head over here. Oh, and we met one of the first aliens. Alright, so we basically just start open war. But with help, we manage to survive. Down here, we can see what's on the planet. So I will equip this to a scanner, so we can now see events and such. Right. And now they basically hate us. Goodbye. Ships will repair themselves if you wait long enough, or just by simply traveling. Oh, so this is a trading outpost, so I can trade items for value, which unfortunately I don't have anything I can use. Oh, but that is very good. Repair. Now our travel speed will be cut down even more. Uh oh. I think he's happy. Yeah. So we have a beacon we can now use. A new weapon. So what's great about these traders is they will just... They don't really care about the value of the item. They just simply care about the items themselves. So I'm going to trade my sled drive. That gives me one point of credit. I will take this. And this is another part about like the roguelike design. 
If you know what you're doing, you can really start to break the game or make life very easy for yourself. So I will replace my 4-1 with a 5-1. So we just got a huge upgrade. All I need now is a better thirst thruster. Bah. Thruster. Thr I can't say thruster. There you go. Thruster. <laughs> and then life will be good. Ooh. Alright. Let's see what this does. Hello from the children of planet Earth. Aw. So apparently there's some bad stuff, or there's some events up here. Again, it's kind of tr hard to navigate in a 3D space sometimes. With my new long range weapons. Let's see how we do. Um, I would like some better shielding, though. Oh, thank you. Now I just really want a particle vortex can again. Life will be good. Okay, here's my shield two three three. Yeah, I'll take greater strength. Can only have one shield clip at a time, though. Again, we'll repair. And apparently, there's something going on up here. Uh -oh. I may have to run from this one. Let's see. The missiles will not attack the heavier guys. Yeah, we better get out of here. Thankfully, my stronger shield was able to hold up against that. So we will just move on over here, and we got a, our first actual wingman, who will now join us in fighting. Now because we're going to Nebula, you can see it increases the amount of time, so I want to ignore that for right now. So I'm going to head back here, and see a Ripcore here it will help us win. Almost had him. Again, once you sh your ship gets to that point of stability with enough firepower, you can just basically stay in the back and snipe everything to death. But again, what makes it in Space 3 super playable is the fact that you never know what you're going to find. So again, we can start with a drive upgrade that usually helps out quite nicely. So we will fly over here. Okay. Uh oh. That means we have to get out of here. Oh. I'll take it. So he wants a weapon or something for his ship, which I do not have at the time. Okay, we need to get out of this nebula. Uh oh. Alright, so they want our help. So we will give it. They didn't really need it, but it will make them friendly with us. 
And I got another little item. So I'm gonna piss him off until we find a better weapon. And you'll find this game that you'll either be grossly overpowered or are completely weak in a lot of situations. So this will extend the range, I believe. Oh no. So you can see this items when you go through the nebula. It slows you down so much. I don't think we'll be able to fight this. Yeah. Evil drone creatures. Yeah. We're not ready for that. Until we get some really powerful long range weapons, we're just going to get wiped out. That's fine. <laughs> Doesn't really do anything. If we can find a trader, we should be able to clean house with it. Oh, this is a oh no. These guys are some of the most dangerous enemies in the game. And I just teleport right next to them. Oh, yeah, that that's a death. <laughs> that is a death right there. I'm playing the game very much fast and loose with the rules here. Alright, well, we'll see if third time's the charm. Yeah, nothing really close. Hmm? Okay, apparently they'll give me a reward if I can take them back there. Uh, we'll see if we can get there. Alive. Let's warp back here, just in case. Oh good, these are the trading people. What will they have for us this time? Oh, very good. And very good again. I just need items to trade with, so we need to find... No, actually, one of the best things about swap me, I can just take this, do that, do that. Three, three, two. Yeah, I'll swap that. Not bad, thank you traders. Ooh, the multi-missile launcher, another one of the best weapons. It's that and the particle vortex cannon are the two you really want to get. Oh, that just made life a whole lot easier for us. I think this is going to take me, it's not going to take me to the nebula. Again, we'll head our way to that quest up there. Alright. A kestrel. Hmm. <laughs> oh, let's see what it does. With my new thrusters and weapons, you can see I have a lot greater range. Maybe it's just dragging the arrow around to create my path. You better not come alive on me, kestrel. Now, of course, that is from FTL. Isn't this play just full of surprises, folks? <laughs> okay, well, not bad. And what's cool is I can outfit that shit with a lot of other good stuff as well. Oh, what happened?
Okay, apparently there's been a rebellion. And it looks like they're gonna come for me. That's not good. Apparently, all kinds of stuff are happening right now. Huh? Let's help them out, I guess? Okay. There's my Kestrel. As long as the Hercules stays alive, I'll be good. Now, thanks to my multi-missile launcher... and my enhanced thrusters, I should be able to keep out of their range. A little bit more and we can just snipe them. With the multi-missile launcher, this should just be able to kill these guys very quickly. Keep the Kestrel over here. Boom. Now all I need is a Particle Vortex Cannon. And basically life will be sweet. Goodbye. Okay, take any two items from the swap meet. Well, I mean that's good. But I don't think there's, like, anything I really need. Yeah. Well, I guess I'll take... that. And, well, I'll take a fuzzy lummox, I guess. <laughs> But we might as well head back to Glory and see if we can save the world. What's the quickest way? Okay. Uh oh. I actually want to see how much damage this will do to them. That'll work. Uh-oh. What? Oh, come on. Yeah, this is gonna be a restart, because we just lost all of our best stuff. And again, the combat, I think, is the weakest part of Infinite Space 3. There's just... Too much of it is just throw your ship at another ship and see who survives. There's not as much strategy to it as you would see in a game like FTL, or even something like Dungeons of Dreadmore. It can get away with it to some extent due to how quick the plays are. I mean, we've done several plays already in the last 25 minutes. But, again, it's one of those games where you're either going to dominate immediately, or you're just going to die within, like, one battle, as you can see. Hmm. This is a hor- wow, we are in a horrible position. Basically, I need to break out of the nebula. There we go. Oh, well, that's good. Okay, so he's willing to trade once again. Ooh, perfect. Swap that. Oh wait. There we go. Two, two, three. Uh, I'll keep mine. And I'll trade that for that. Now you'll see super speed. Oh, thank you. Not sure what he's going to do, but I'll take him. 
Mm -mm. Problem is that it's so hard to maneuver around once they get to you. Unless you have like the best stuff already. They'll probably want me to leave. Fine. Once I get the particle can though, watch out. And we got the hyper vision, apparently. I'm not sure what that is. Uh, again. Alright, let's keep going. And trying to be peaceful until we don't need to be. Mm. And again, this is just the nature of the roguelike. Because it's random, we have no idea how each play is going to work out. Even though the pool of random events is set, the game's not going to generate new events for us just the order or where they may or may not appear. So eventually, if you play this game enough, you're going to basically see and know everything there is. Now what? I think that's kind of like one of like the limiting factors of Infinite Space 3 is that despite all the RAM events, there are set good things you want. You always want the Particle Vortex Cannon, you want the Multi-Missile Launcher. And this kind of, because there is a set path to greatness in that sense, it does mean that you can sort of try to, I want to say cheat, but sort of know what you want to get at. Oh god. Oh man, we gotta get out of here before that thing hits us. I wish there was just a little bit more ways of making combat more engaging though. Mm, we're in their sector now. These are exact reasons why you want the particle cannon and multi-missile. Now what? Oh good, they both want to kill me. Well that's great. Now I don't want to go over there. We. Okay. Oh, more trading goods. Now what? Oh good. Everyone just hates me on this side of the galaxy. Later. Okay. So as long as we give them something of use... They'll join our little crew. Oh wait, we've been there already. Uh oh. This gives me the event that we're going to be invaded by insects soon. And the reason I know that is because I've seen that event happen. I'll take that. Oh, well, you know, we've circled the universe. Now what? I don't think we have the means of dealing with them. Hmm.
again, just not a fan of this combat system. And again, losing our main ship, might as well just restart. Especially with an event coming. What's our time? 30 minutes? Yeah, I think that's enough. We've seen, I think, a good portion of what In His Phase 3 is. And again, this is what makes it a roguelike in the pros and cons. Anything can happen, so you can either have a play where you dominate, or you get bad luck like this. My main problems with the game, again, I feel that combat is a little too, um, I guess, automated for my taste. I think if they improve the thrusters, make it so you can actually do some maneuverability around while attacking, it would be a lot more engaging and give the player more means of impacting things. Because as you can see, without having the best weapons, you're always going to be outmanned. So you need those weapons to basically have a um, leg up on your opponents. Now there are, I do like what well, one thing they do right with Sea of Stars again is these mega events that impact how the game plays and basically make sure that you never know how a single play will go. And that, of course, is what makes a roguelike so popular. But there are enough advancings, as you can see. Once you start to know how certain events work or what items to go for, you can start to put together a plan of attack. And that's what I did with Weird Worlds, which was in Space 2. Once I figured out what events to go for, which ones to win, I found that I was winning the majority of my games. Because I was able to get around the randomization to some extent. And when that happens, that also signifies the end of a roguelike. Because once you know the best ways to play, you pretty much know how to win almost every time, unless RNG screws you. So that is Sea of Stars. Hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, be sure to leave a comment. Of course, like and subscribe to the channel. It always helps out. Check out game-wisdom.com where I examine the art and science of games. Follow me on Twitch and Twitter under GW Bicer. And you can find me on Patreon under Game Wisdom. And your donations can help to keep Game Wisdom going and allow me to add more great content for everyone to enjoy. If you would like to see more plays of Infinite Space 3, at least until I find everything out, please let me know in the comments below. As you know, I'm always looking for a new roguelike to dig into. Anyway, thanks again for watching, and I will see you all next time.